God bless you in Jesus' name. I have a, I just want to clarify something, like a rapture update. The other day when I said that we shouldn't be drunk when he comes, basically what I'm trying to tell everybody is, Second Thessalonians says, we're children of light, not children of darkness, for that day should not take us as a thief. We should be self-controlled, like, and, and they get drunk at night. See, we're his bride. We're his chosen bride to be. He chose us before creation. He knew us in him. We are the children of light. We're his bride chosen ones to be. Now, by no means, I was saying, if, because I know people are probably twisting my words. I wasn't saying if you get drunk, you're not going to get rapture. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm trying to say. You know your Lord is coming. You know Jesus is coming. And we, uh, when he comes, when he shows up, we shouldn't be drunk. But then again, it's very possible some people don't believe what I'm telling them. He is coming. It's going to be January the 1st, 2019. Now, Romans 8, 20 says nothing in all creation, not death, not life, not demons, not angels. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. So this is a done deal. We can't screw this up. Now, by no means, I'm not saying it's okay to sin. What I'm trying to tell you is, you know your Lord is coming. You know Jesus is coming. Ask yourself this question. Do you want Jesus to find you drunk when he shows up? You know, that's between you and God. By no means, I'm not saying, by no means, I'm not saying, you will not get rapture. If you are the children of light, if you are chosen, if you are his bride, you're still going to go. I'm trying to tell everyone that I think, based on Second Thessalonians, it says we're children of light, not children of darkness, for that day should not take us as a thief. And then it says we should be self-control and we sh they get drunk, get drunk at night. And it is interesting... It's describing a time when people get drunk. Like New Year's. Happy New Year's. It's literally describing New Year's. So, what I think, it's, it's up to you. But by no means, I'm not saying it's okay to sin. What I'm trying to tell people is, Jesus died for us. He died for your past sins, your present, your future. By no means, it's not okay to sin. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, he's coming now. And I honestly think it's not a good idea when he shows up to be drunk. Not to mention, when people get drunk, this is something else people don't realize. A lot of people do bad stuff. They don't remember doing it. Some people wake up the next morning from being drunk, they did some horrible thing and something bad happens to them. They get in trouble. They get in trouble. They don't remember doing it, but they did it. And there's, um, there's also a scripture in the Bible that says, instead of being drunk, we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's an actual scripture. I forget where it's at, but there is a scripture in the Bible that says that we should, instead of being drunk, we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Like, filled more so. A more feeling of the Holy Spirit. But, what I'm trying to say is, we're chosen. We're the bride-to-be. We're the children of light. You belong to Jesus. Nothing. In all creation, like Romans 8, 20, life, death, demons, angels, nothing can separate you from the love of God. When he comes, he's coming to get you. Yes, when we sin, we should ask Jesus for forgiveness. But we don't have, if we forget to do it, we're covered. When he died on the cross, it is finished. That's when he died, Jesus said, it is finished. Like, for instance, the cross itself, like say you wear a cross on your neck, 
You don't really need to wear a cross with uh, Jesus on it. Jesus is off the cross. It's a done deal. He's off the cross. It's finished. He's no longer on the cross. He's in heaven. He's God. But is finished. So, He's coming right now. And He died for all our sins. And we should try not to sin. But there's an actual scripture in the Bible that says the things, it was one of the, the, I forget where, one of the apostles said, the things I don't want to do, I keep doing. And the things I want to do, I can't do. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is, and if you go to the book of Job too, Job made sacrifices for his sons, for sins they might commit. Every day, we don't even realize it. You commit sins. Everybody commits sins. Every day, we commit sins. But you don't realize their sins before God, before Jesus. So, you don't realize it. But they're sins. But, and, and if you don't realize their sins, how can you ask for forgiveness? You don't have to constantly ask for forgiveness. But it's okay. To ask Jesus for forgiveness. It doesn't hurt. If, but it's not your salvation. Your salvation is what Jesus did on the cross. It's finished when he died. He said it's finished. He finished it. It's a done deal. He died. Was buried. He rose in three days. It's finished. And that's why we are Seven days unclean on the eighth day were circumcised. It's what Jesus did. It's nothing you can do. You can't buy your way into heaven. You can't work your way into heaven. You can't be a good person. Of course, a lot of God's children, His bride, they, they do good things because it comes naturally. God is love. Of course you're going to do good things because you're, 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 you're like... Your shadow, um, you reflect God's love. And God is love. So it says they will know us by our love. The world will know us by our love. And God's children, His bride, His chosen one, the children of light, they want to do good things because that's what God is. Jesus is love. But He's coming now. With seven days, a man child is unclean on the eighth day it's circumcised. It's in Leviticus 23. It not only says about a woman being unclean, it also talks about the man child is unclean. If you read the text, it's saying the man child is unclean. On the eighth day, he is circumcised. Now, I can understand what it means to be circumcised. But my point is, we're leaving. We're leaving. The flesh is going to get cut off us. It's not going to hurt. Basically, the rapture is where our, our incorruptible bodies will be changed to incorruptible bodies. We will no longer have fleshly bodies. We will have heavenly bodies. And that's what's going to happen. A man shall is unclean for seven days. On the eighth day, it's circumcised. So basically, Christmas came. That started a countdown. A seven day countdown. The eighth day. We're going to get raptured. Revelation 12 is going to be completed. And then Israel. Which the woman represents Israel. And the dragon goes after the rest of her offspring. The, the text in the Holy Bible. Revelation 12. Says the dragon goes after the rest of her offspring. Because part of the offspring is gone. The Gentiles are all gone, snatched up. Many are called, but few are chosen. It's going to be people that are called. They know Jesus, they know God, but it's not good enough. Being called is not good enough. You have to be chosen. This is a wedding. 
You're G, you're, you are his bride. You're Jesus' bride. We're married to God. That's why it says one of the Ten Commandments have no other God before. He's a jealous God. If you also read in the text, the Holy Bible, our God is a jealous God. You know why he's a jealous God? Because being married to Jesus or being married on earth is a foreshadow to being married to God. I know what it means. Because I know what it's like when your loved one, your wife, because I've, I've been married twice. First one ran off with other guys on the internet. So I know what jealousy means. I know what it means. I know the hurt. If you belong to God and you're chosen and you cheat on God, Jesus, with other gods, you worship other gods, demons, devil, whatever, and you truly belong to Jesus, and you're chosen, well, he's going to wake you up. He's literally going to wake you up. He's going to wake you up. But, and come to think of it, I, I gave my first wife a second chance. She did it twice. I gave her a chance to stop, to redeem herself, to stop doing this. She couldn't stop. She couldn't stop running off with other guys. But, so God blessed me. Jesus blessed me with a new wife. But, you see, I know what it means to be married. I know what it means jealousy. I know what it means. I know how God feels when we cheat on him. If we seek other gods, like, say, the devil or demons or anything that you would worship other than Jesus. I know what it feels like. I know how he feels. But he's a loving God. He loves us. He loves us. Guess what? He's coming right now. Venus is in Libra right now. It's going to be in there for eight days. And on the eighth day, the moon's going to jump in there. A man child's unclean for seven days. On the eighth day, it's circumcised. This is the final piece to the puzzle. The Revelation 12 sign is about to be complete. It's exciting. Just think. No more worries. Don't have to pay bills. Don't have to worry about buying food for your family. It's all going to be over with. But come the 1st. January the 1st, 2019. I just think... I'm sorry if everyone felt that I was... Because I see people are calling me names. Like, like, like a jerk. I'm not a jerk. I'm trying to help everybody. But here's what I'm trying to tell you. You're chosen. And if you're chosen, you can't screw this up. By no means I'm not saying it's okay to sin. What I'm saying is, you've been told, you know your Lord is coming, Jesus is coming. I think it would be a good idea when your Lord shows up for Him not to find you drunk. Now, there's a difference. Drunk and drinking a little is a big difference. Maybe one glass won't get you drunk. But there's a big difference between, say, going to town on it and getting drunk than, say, maybe drinking one glass. See, I don't drink. So, I don't know how much it takes to get drunk. But I know it takes more, it might take quite a bit. But I think when he shows up, when Jesus shows up, we shouldn't get drunk. We know he's coming. We know he's coming. And we're covered. All our sins are covered. 
And by no means, it's not okay to sin. Because check this out. If there is an actual scripture, I forget where it's at, that says an earthly father punishes his children. Just like an earthly father punishes his children, your heavenly father will, I forget the exact words, punish you. Otherwise, you'd be a legitimate child. In other words, if you belong to Jesus, say you're doing something bad, a sin, God is going to, Jesus is going to wake you up. He's going to get your attention. He might, I don't know, something bad might happen. Something to wake you up. Like, say for instance, it's a sin to have another God. If you belong to Jesus, you shouldn't have any other gods, like the devil or the or, or demons. You should only have Jesus. And if you belong to Jesus and you do that, he's going to wake you up. It, the text says he's a jealous God. He's a jealous God because we're married to him. You're his wife, his bride to be. That's why Jesus established marriage between a man and a woman. So once we could understand what it means to be married on earth, then we can understand His coming. Once you figure out what it means to be married on earth, you can take this information and find the day. The day is finally here. It's January the 1st, 2019. It's amazing. The scripture says, see the day approaching. If you don't keep watch, you won't know what hour I come. So it's, it's, it's really there. Now, it's exciting. Now, I notice everyone wants to know who I am. Well, really, it's not about me. It's about Jesus. But I'll tell you this. If you know your Bible, I am the person that doubted Jesus when he rose from the dead. But I don't doubt Jesus. In the Bible, someone doubted Jesus when he rose from the dead. If you know your Bible, you'll know my name. But see, it's not about me. It's about Jesus. And the scripture says, blessed he who's... Because see, they've seen. We haven't seen. It says, blessed he who hasn't seen but believes. I believe Jesus died for our sins. I believe he rose from the dead in three days. I believe Jesus is God. He's God. And I don't doubt. He's coming now. And none of us should doubt. You know why? It's impossible to please your Lord God, Jesus without faith. It might be why the scriptures say you must come to him like a child. If you think about a child, child, you can get a child to believe anything. I know. It's so hard to believe that come January the 1st, 2019, we get raptured. Jesus sends his angels. But I'm so glad Jesus has woken up his bride. He's telling his bride he's coming right now. He's coming to get us right now. And nothing in all creation can stop this. Not the demons, not the devil. Trust me, they don't like us. Nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God. But it's exciting. He's coming. Well, I bind up the demons in Jesus' name, whatever they try to do to God's chosen bride, to children of light. I bind up the demons. It'll bounce in the demon's face. And in Jesus' name, I bind up the evil doers, whatever they try to do, the children of darkness, whatever they try to do to God's children, His chosen bride will bounce in their face. In Jesus' name, protect Israel, the 144,000 Jews, Jacob's trouble. Protect Israel, period, from all her adversaries in Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name, let your kingdom come, that your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you all in Jesus' name. Talk to you later. Bye.